We've got loads of GAA news as well, obviously. We'll talk about that with um, Anthony in just a little while. So the order of our newspapers this morning, I'm going to start first with the Irish Times. Uh, Liverpool ready to fight for our dreams, says Jurgen Klopp. That's the headline there, and Klopp looking for more of the same. So obviously his press conference yesterday, and a uh, picture of Mo Salah, because, well, why not? It's one of the most famous athletes in the world uh, at the moment. Totti urges Roma fans to stay calm. A lot of uh, measures taken by the police in Rome, um, banning drinking around the ground from last night. So there'll be a, a cordoned off area where people can't drink. And um, Martin O'Neill says the Stephen Gerrard appointment at Rangers could benefit Celtic by maybe making it a little bit more interesting again. So Celtic wouldn't be bored winning seven leagues in a row. Mm. Celtic need Rangers. They do. They need a good Rangers. They do. Yeah, um, absolutely they do. And it, it's it's... It's getting a little bit, it is getting back to that kind of boring, like it's just, you know, once in a while they get a shock, but it's, it's, it's not a real massive challenge for them. And Rangers have been really poor, really, really poor. Jesus, they were desperate last week or the week before, you know, fellas saying they would look like a pub team. It's, it's, it's amazing the fall from grace that has been there, considering the size of the club and the history of it and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, maybe they need someone like that to kind of re-energise it. But I think they needed to re-energise the Scottish Premier League. Yeah. I don't think Celt I used to be of the view that Celtic needed a strong Rangers, but they aren't really dependent on Rangers being competitive anymore. It's not going to help them in terms of playing week in, week out against decent side. It's hasn't stopped them qualifying help. for the Champions League there'll group be, stages. There'll be at least some more money for a TV deal. Some more. Not a whole heap more, but some more money for a TV deal. And every little helps when you're trying to... If you're fishing in, like, the third tier of players. Well, you have to remember where Rangers Derby. have come from. I mean, Rangers yeah. have come from the bottom division, where they've had to basically renew the club from the very embers of what the dying club that had to go its own way in the last few years. They have come up and got promotion three times in four seasons. The fact that they're second in the Scottish Premiership is actually a huge achievement. I don't think they get any credit for being able to rebuild to the point that they have. Obviously, they have a much bigger fan base than any other club in the mm. country outside of Celtic. But they've come from the very bottom to almost the very top. It's actually not that bad a four-year spell under range. It's just that they just hate seeing Celtic do so well and yeah. it makes everything seem worse than it actually is. Nine in a row is the record. Mm. Celtic and Rangers have both done it at various stages in their history. Celtic are currently on seven. You've got to think they're going to get to ten and maybe beyond. It would be a bit of a miracle for him to win a title in the three seasons, would it? Yeah, I think it certainly could. Like, I mean, if you look at it now, you would say with Rangers being in, shall we say, I know Dave is saying, but like, I mean, they're way off compared to Celtic. Um, the reason I think that Celtic need them is, is just the fact of that that old firm clash is still something that you say, okay, I'll watch this, you know, even if you're yeah. not necessarily into it. You'll still go, of all, like, I mean, you won't necessarily watch Celtic Hearts or, you know, but you'll definitely watch that. Did game. you watch them this season? I did actually. Yeah, yeah. I, I still know. haven't been interested enough. My interest has not been renewed sufficiently to because they're no in. good. But if they were good, yeah. you might. But actually, you after, might. After, after, after I would kind of go. If they were as bad next year, I wouldn't bother <laughs> yeah. next year. You know, because today's kinda, Evans, yeah. I'm not watching next year. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but there just wasn't that si even the same old bite that they used to be. You know, no. taking lumps out of each other. You know, there was just it just didn't seem to be. But it was just one was far superior than the other. Yeah. It. Yeah, uh, there was two other quick stories in the Irish Times that I wanted to talk about. Um, Sean Moran has a piece about Leitrim and New York, and we were running through the permutations. If New York win this, what happens? Yeah. <laughs> Where is the next round of the Connacht Championship? If New York win, are they do they come back, and what, does that create a bit of an issue for some of the New York lads? Well, no, they Maybe don't. We come don't back. be talking about. <laughs> There's no issue. Back. <laughs> New York will not be playing on Irish soil, no matter what. Like, no matter well, no. Because what if they, they went on a winning run? Because they wouldn't have a team. Is that, so is that actually the case? Yes. There's I, two, there, are, there, there is no way that the New York squad and management are going to be upping sticks and heading over here for a game. It's just for at least, even if it was too much of a risk for one of them, that will not be the case. The, well, the biggest problem is for the team that have to go play them because they will have three weeks. Ross Common will have three weeks to put together that trip. Mm. Now, three weeks out, trying to buy tickets, all the logistics that go with it, the accommodation in the summer... I can't imagine the expense that will be incurred. It's an absolute nightmare it's for the Connacht Council. You know, it's like I, do, I think it'd be brilliant. To Fortress see it. Gaelic Park. And imagine Ross beat Roscommon, and it's like, well, it's Galway Mayo and the Connacht final in Roscommon. And Roscommon only beat them by a point last year, like or like two years ago. It'd be kind of like the fail of Roscommon players would be sent over and have to kind of stay with the in New houses. York players in the houses <laughs> or in their apartments and stuff. You know, to be sent out all over the, the boroughs of yeah. New York. You know, I do know though for a fact that the GAA have a. It's probably one of the only things you'd say. But 
but they actually have a contingency plan. Right. That if it does happen, flights and all that actually are covered. Right. So okay. it doesn't fall on the Roscommon County okay. board. So the yeah, yeah. Croke Park picks up that. Correct. Or at, yeah. the, at the very yeah. least, the Connacht no. uh, Provincial <laughs> Council, which will be helped by Croke Park. Right. It's kind of like, you know, the magic box that's never been opened. Yeah. Say if they actually had there was nothing in there going, Hang oh, on. we said we had this covered last. There's some moths in here. They, yeah. have, they have the money. <laughs> Break glass right? in case of emergency, yeah. which is yeah. exactly what would yeah, happen absolutely. if you were quick. Some, just some Garth Brooks tickets. <laughs> Imagine what they did. Like, I didn't realise Jamie Clark and stuff are playing. I yeah, didn't yeah. realise that. Oh, there, like, was a massive, there was a massive gamble on... New York. So New York came down from about six to one to they were touching odds on at one point and they're gone back out now. But there was a massive gamble but two months ago everybody got word, Jamie Clark is playing, he's gonna kick one twelve. Yeah. And it's late and they're not very good. <laughs> and so um none of us got on obviously at that stage. Oh of course not. No. Uh but are you laying the bet now? And I, I, I don't know. I think that like Leitrim forewarned, forearmed, all that kind of stuff. You know, like it's not like. Well, oh, I think it's a great, great chance. For it's them. hard to know. Like two years ago, Ross Common got out of there by the skin of their teeth. Yeah. Last year, there was a lot of talk for New York against Sligo. People were really bigging up their chances. And they were Sligo ahead were. in the second half. Uh, yeah, but I was listening to the game and Sligo with ten with ten minutes gone in the second half, they just put the. Uh, the foot down yeah, they and they did. pulled away they and it was a really professional performance from Sligo to get the job done at the end this time around though against a Leitrim team that's on a low ebb after the league and yeah. suddenly New York have that forward the guy who could easily just win the game on his own and Tom Kniff and Tom Kniff yeah. exactly but a forward who takes at least two Leitrim defenders out of the game yeah you know, it's not like a guy, he's okay, he's good, you know, like say Mulligan who was playing with London or whatever you say okay, we'll, listen, we'll match up one on one he takes at least two yeah. Like he takes thinking. If you're the leader of management, you're saying, "Okay, how do we look?" He's in the peak guy? of his powers. Absolutely, like, he is, and um, he's that type of a player. Like I mean, he has skinned serious defenses on his own before, playing yeah. playing up front on his own. Yeah. Do you remember a couple of years ago, Armagh literally, I think, played him inside on his own against Donegal, up against two or three players, and they just said, "Listen, we just try to get good ball into you." That's yeah. the potential he has. Now you obviously have to win enough ball to get it into him. I think it's a great opportunity. It's a serious opportunity. I'll be, I'll be listening to the uh, live radio feed on local radio this Saturday evening. Shannon I remember side? I was coming back. It would be it'll be it would be Shannon side. I remember listening to uh, the Sligo game when I, I was coming back from a Premier League match for New Stock last Sunday. I was listening in uh, Stansted Airport. It would have been would, would have been would have been Northern Sound. It would have been Shannon side. I don't maybe Leitrim isn't Shannon side. Is it a uh, Ocean Ocean FM? Maybe Ocean is more Donegal Sligo. Right. Sure. Shannon well, Tommy side, says yeah. it's Shannon side, yeah. so there you go. There you go. W will it be Willie Hegarty or is he just uh, Ross Common? It'll be both. Eh? Yeah, it's a, I mean, you're not going to turn that in that trip. It's like, oh, I only do the Ross Common. <laughs> they're playing Sligo. Uh, uh, they're playing New York this year. <laughs> oh, I also do the uh, Leitrim games. Yeah. <laughs> I think it'd be worthwhile getting it going over there at short notice <laughs> just to see the upset. Johnny of the Ward. Season. Johnny Ward is heading over. <laughs> he he might be one of those people who are on that at a, at a slightly bigger price. Might be. Yeah. <laughs> he was in with us this week and uh, he was saying the customs interview is going to be interesting. Uh, what are you going over for, sir? Well, I have a massive bet on New York to be Leitrim in the championship. I just want to make sure that it's going to be all right. It's like, well, it's not legal. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, right. So let's move on to the Irish Independent, right? Uh, so Jackson and Olding for sale, and that's uh, sale sharks as opposed to, uh, you know, the pun on words there. But um, they're saying that the world's tiniest violin is playing for Paddy Jackson, who is only going to be earning 200 grand sterling, which is about 227,000 at sale, while uh, Stuart Olding is also finishing or facing some kind of um, pay cut as well. I'm very surprised that any club has decided to rush into this at this point and take the leap and sign these players now. I understand the need for uh, you want to get your players in and, and make sure everybody knows you have them. But like, if this is a two or three year deal, then wait until the end of the summer, wait until they're desperate and offer them far less money. And then also it's further from the uh, Ferrari around the trial. Like, give it as much of distance as you possibly can. Sale making this decision and this announcement, it hasn't been fully announced yet, but they're expected to announce it at the end of the season. It's like, it's, it's right there in everybody's media feed. It's, there, it's the type of thing that will come up. Yeah, I'd say it was a situation of there was lots of demand. I think that's the case. Get them before somebody else gets them. I don't think there's lots of demand for them. Well, well we don't know. I think that the and agents are trying to tell us there's lots of demand. Once the season is the over, demand will increase. And Sale, yeah. who are unable to make the playoffs for the uh, 
Premiership as things stand at the moment are certainly unlikely to get into the playoffs. They're probably already looking at doing their business for next season and they, I would say they feel that once the curtain f- comes down on this season that there is going to be demand. So we might as well get this bit of business done now. Mm. I had heard, listen, you know, rumours abound. I had heard that Exeter had already kind of signed contracts with them and then it was obviously people were saying they potentially will go to France to get further away from yeah. geographical sense. I think they were saying the sale, the kind of main man in sale is a kind of a turnaround specialist. He had Cipriani in before and he had a couple of fellas who would seem to be a little bit on the edge, you know, and he kind of has given them chances to kind of redeem themselves. So, you know, I just think it's a demand thing, Ger. Honestly, I think I think that people will decide that, look, these two guys are potential, have played for Ireland, they're internationals, and we're going to pick them up. I'm surprised at the wage bill. Uh, I thought there'd be knockdown but I think that smacks then of, of demand too that obviously these guys aren't even taking much of a hit um, now obviously it, it's just a, you don't know if it's 100% true but I think you know time is a healer and I think people will just say listen although you don't want to leave it too long I think what is it four weeks now five weeks six weeks in this current times that's probably long enough because yeah. I think as Dave says I think the people are going to be coming out of woodwork be it French clubs mm. Italian clubs especially um, for Jackson like international class 10s are a prized commodity out there, mm. regardless of their history. And obviously Jackson's carrying an awful lot of baggage wherever he goes. But just ask Ulster the difficulties with trying to find an international class fly half. So They've say, got major issues in that regard at the moment. Just, I was looking up the um, premiership table. Sale are currently seventh on 54 points, and they're two points behind Gloucester and four points behind Leicester. The top six automatically qualify for the Champions yeah. Cup? So if they qualify for the Champions Cup and uh, say Ulster get quali- qualify for the Champions Cup and then Jackson's back at Jackson and Oldinger back next year at Ravenhill, mm. it's definitely a situation that I'm sure everybody would have preferred to wait a while before that happens. Well, there are several lifts in that uh, conundrum you've just put together there, Jerry. Huge ifs, And that's if, if they're actually played by sale because I would think the wise decision would be why don't we just leave the two boys in uh, in Manchester for that weekend and let's see if we can get the job done without them. All right, yeah. let's uh, move on. So the other stories on the uh, back <coughs> of the Irish uh, Independent were about Rob, or not Rob Henderson, Ian Henderson perhaps being a doubt for the tour to Australia. Not the worst thing if Ian Henderson has a bit of time off after a long time on the road. So moving on to the Guardian, uh, King Kaler. This is uh, Kaler Navas, heroics come to the rescue for Real Madrid as Benzema books place in third successive final. We'll talk a bit more about that game in a couple of minutes' time. And date with destiny. Liverpool will fight for our dreams, says Wary Club. Jurgen Club Wary because um, his assistant is apparently being linked back in Bosnia with the Arsenal gig. Um, and it was the same Bosnian media outlet that broke the news that Club was also going to be joining Liverpool. So they have form for that story. And then finally for me, the examiner. Tunnel vision, let's fight for our dreams, urges Club. And that's a bunch of uh, very young-looking Liverpool players on their way to the uh, game this evening on the back. The schedule may be a bit mad, but format is a crazy kind of good. We'll talk about that a little bit later on as well when we get to our more GAA stories. What have you got for us, Anthony? Yeah, just some more stuff, uh, Ger, really about the, the, the Roma fans uh, and the Liverpool fans. Police ready to hold fans until 1am in the, in the Irish edition of the Times. It seems a bit uh, excessive. Two and a half hours after the game finishes, they're going to be held back for I guess whatever it takes, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, you know, the Sean Cox thing is obviously, uh, it has been really, you know, to mean been Boyne. Um, you know, the people around there obviously heard it straight away, you know, the talk, like, I mean, was just devastation, obviously, around the place. And it's, it's great to see what Liverpool have done and indeed what Roma have done. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's obviously a very, very tough situation. But, yeah. Who knows? Hopefully, just it, it can go off without any kind of major, uh, major events going on. Again, just saying in the in the Irish in the Times, Jackson could sign for sale. Just what you said, Ulster are just saying maybe forced to wait for their new coach uh, due to a Scottish contract. Yeah, the Scots are pissed off because uh, this news came out before a deal had been finalised. That's the undercurrent there, and it's like, no, we're going to put you on gardening leave now until January. Yeah, screw you, Ulster, and screw you, RFU. That'd be a bit annoying, wouldn't it? No, we found this guy. Writing the season off. Definitely going to have him here for yeah. the start of the season. Maybe. Yeah, so I think they'll, they'll probably just end up buying him out of the contract, I'd say. Like money solves all those problems, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. That's what it's take, but because they've come out so early, Ulster, and they've just jacked up the price of any compensation that's going to have to be paid. Yeah, they've got to get it done. If they're going to have any kind of sense of stability and if you're going to try and convince some tens to go north from Dublin 
then it's like, well, who's my coach? That guy that you announced it are not going to have until January, by which stage, effectively, the Champions Cup is gone for another season, unless your stand-in manager or coach is brilliant to the point where, well, did you need the other guy? Like... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. yeah. Makes a no, difference. That's not ideal. No. Uh, Peter Canavan as well in the time saying that he wouldn't, uh, he's not that pushed about taking over the intercom. No one is. Yeah. It's kind of, it reminds me of the boiling air where everyone's like, oh no, I, I wouldn't want to, you know, definitely yeah. don't want to manage me. And, uh, you know, Hart is obviously there. He's there for, I don't know how long. How's it? Is he 13, Nine, 14? 2003 it? was his, we won it in his first yeah. year, didn't he? Having one day minors and under twenty ones before that. Yeah. Canavan wants to be the guy after the guy. Yeah, that's a long Plus time away. Yeah, exactly. And that's the way to do it. Um, unless though, it's been so long. It's kind of like the guy after Wenger is actually the right time to be there because it's been a while since Tyrone have been properly relevant. I mean, last year they get reached the All Ireland semi final, but they get blitzed to the point where you don't think they're realistic contenders. And so there's a nucleus of a good team, and they clearly it seems need a new voice. So. And you get Peter next season. They have won back to back Ulster titles, which is not easily done. They were contenders in everybody's mind until 15 minutes into the All Ireland semi final last year. About 10 minutes. Um, plenty of people were tipping them Five to minutes. win an All Ireland <laughs> over the course of the last season. And they're a Division 1 team. It's, like, yeah. it's not like Tyrone are going backwards right now. No, but like, you don't really feel like coming in after Mickey Hart now is coming in after Mickey Hart in, it's say, in 2010, 2009. No, it's not. But, yeah. it's, but they are still a force. They're in the top four teams in the country. Yeah. yeah. So it's a great yeah. time to get the job. Well, actually, in the Irish News, um, Owen Mulligan is, 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 is talking in the Irish News and he says that the current Tyrone forwards would not get into the All-Ireland winning team. So That's because there's only one of them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But actually, I, you know what? I watched him closely this year uh, during the league and I like what he's doing, Hart. He's brought O'Neill in as obviously a kind of a forwards guru, Stephen O'Neill, and he's brought him in to try and obviously expand because... Listen, the ch the chastening experience in Crow Park last year by Dublin was just you could just see that that was just that was soul destroying for yeah. him. Like I mean, Kavanaugh, Colin Kavanaugh was the only one who was trying to get them going. The only one he was roaring and shouting at them. I don't know if we did that game, but he was roaring and shouting at them. He was actually pleading with them to to lift it, and the fellow they were just so shell shocked by it. And I think obviously Hart realizes that when you go into Crow Park, i.e. one eye on the Super Eight. You cannot have a situation where you have 13 or 12 fellas behind the ball. You have to get a bit more expansive. And actually, to be fair, I think he's unearthed a couple of decent forwards. Uh, your man Brennan is a good young forward. And the way the style that they're playing now, I think, is helping them. Um, and against Donegal, I was really impressed. And even against Dublin in the first half, I was impressed. And in Dublin, fix things. So I think they'll have a big say this year, actually. I think they really will. I think they're a decent team again. Um, that first forward line... 10 was Dewar, 11 was Brian McGuigan, 12 was Cavillan, 13 was Andy McGinley, 14 was Peter Cannon, and 15 was on Mulligan. So that's even before Stephen O'Neill comes into the team. That's um, not bad. No. The 05 forward lineup was sensational because you, you throw Stephen O'Neill in there. Um, in, in 08, Sean Cavan, who was named at 14, and that you had Ryan Mellon on that team, you had Martin Penrose, they wouldn't be as Enda McGinley, not Enda McGinley, uh, Tommy McGuigan, they wouldn't be as prolific as the, the mm. 05 lineup. And obviously, you know, 3 8 Canavan's still somewhere close to his peak. But he's probably right that they don't get the credit they deserve as a forward line and as a team. But he's definitely right in saying that the current forward line wouldn't get into that, in particularly 03 or 05. But like it's, not mean, referred to it's not referred to as one of the all time, line. it's not referred to as one of the all time great forward lines, but it really is. It's a, it's a seriously impressive forward line. It really is, because you had height, you have a bit of power, you've got guile, you've got fellas who can score, you've got a bit of everything there. And Peter Canavan. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And then you've got him just leading everywhere. But McGuigan and the likes of that and Dewar and different guys, they, they, they unearthed some unbelievable players. Um, and guys, I suppose, they don't really get it because they were the first real team to kind of, I suppose, that were labelled this defensive kind of yeah. thing. You yeah. know, and so there wasn't a real feeling that oh, like I mean, it's this perception is reality. There wasn't a real feeling like I mean that they're really a forward unit, mm. whereas they actually, like I mean, they were. And they probably revolutionised how forwards also defend. Yeah. Like they were also a forward bunch who could tackle mm. and win their own ball and press. Mm. Um, At his absolute peak, for me, Stephen O'Neill is as good as any forward that's played the game in the last thirty years when he was at his best. 
in 05. That was pointed kick, but like, but, but, but with there's four or five metres between right him and the end line. Yeah. Like an angle that Left you would seem right to be at both feet. Yeah. Absolutely impossible to score from where yeah. he is, and he just did, used to do it routinely. But he also, because actually, I only marked him once, and he was he was practically injured. It was the time we beat him in, um, in 07. And he came on, and actually, I think Darren Fay had to go off, so I went back in full back. Thanks for that. And O'Neill came on. But... I remember he got a ball out in front of me and I kind of went up behind, like, I mean, obviously I thought he was going to swing around his right foot, but he dummy soldered and just spun it away from me and clipped, like, outside of his left boot. And it just went wide and I just said, oh, thank God, <laughs> he hasn't been on from the start. Well, that was, you, did such, you did such a number on him that he it forced him into retirement. No, 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 definitely wasn't that. <laughs> that but was it, his last the, match the before court, he decided to call it quits but, and then, of course, came back for the All-Ireland Final yeah, the following year, but yeah. it was Milesy that uh, no, no, Stephen no, O'Neill no. thought, I'm not up to this anymore. He is, he was, he was fast, he was deceptively quick. Yeah. And he was a big guy. Yeah. You know, and he could really play it anyway with you. Like, he could hold you off, he was physically strong. Yeah. Um, but he was a very smart individual and he was a smart player, you could see that. And I think this idea where, I don't know if you saw the Dublin game, but they were doing an awful lot of this no-look passes where they're going one way, you know, they're going, say, left to right. And for all attempts and purposes, it looks like they're going to put the ball down into the right-hand corner, but then they switch it. That was a real O'Neill thing to do, you know, to completely catch a full back line. So, in other words, they're, everyone's looking one way and then the ball gets diagonally pressed to the other way. Yeah. Um, so, I think he's... And to be fair, I think there was a major falling out between him and Hart back in the day. So obviously they've gelled that and they've mended that. So yeah, I think I think Tyrone will be will take some stop in this year. Do you buy the, the lines that everybody's coming out with about the dubs? Mickey Hart was peddling it yesterday that ah sure their time is up and Brian Sheehan saying that they won't be hungry. Yeah, Brian Sheen saying willing on all, all Ireland breeds complacency, and when it comes down to the crunch and an All Ireland semi or a final this year, will that hunger still be there for Dublin? To which I said to Moisey earlier, well, it, it didn't seem to, they had no issue winning their second All Ireland or the third yeah. or the fifth in seven years or the five leagues in six years. Um, there doesn't seem to be any diminishing of the hunger. It's one game against Donegal, that's it, that yeah. is stopping them from like, having won everything. Yeah, forever. it is. And um, yeah. every year there's at least one, if not two, new young guys that come into the team. It just shows you how competitive the squad is. You can't be complacent because if you want to play for them, like Mayo can be complacent from January to July because eight, nine out of the starting 15 know that no matter how much they stink the joint out in the winter and spring, <laughs> if they show themselves to be anything close to their best come yeah. June, they're going to get back into the right. team. That does not happen if you're playing for Dublin. Yeah. No, and the big, like, we are talking, chatting about it, Dave and I, and the complacency thing, it just doesn't happen. You look at the, even during the league, I think they came back from in, down in Galway where they easily could have just said, oh, we're, you know, we've already qualified, we'll just take this beating. Yeah. Um, and they didn't. They rallied back, I think, to either level or, or win. I think they drew that game. Um, so even in, you know, shall we say, a second-rate kind of league game. When you um, could phone it in, when oh, other teams would absolutely. phone it in, then they'd be excused for it. So yeah, part of it's pride, the other part of it is so I'm actually not going to start for the championship if I don't get the finger out for the next yeah, 20 minutes. Correct. What have you got for us? Uh, you, you race yeah. the post there, Mosey. No, just, just again, uh, more stuff about obviously the game tonight, conquerors of Rome, Liverpool then, Roma's bid to rule Europe. Oh, pretty, you know, I don't know, can they turn it around, can Roma turn it around? Obviously they 3-0 against Barcelona. The second day, have they the ability to do it again? I mean, it's not, it wouldn't be the weirdest thing you've ever seen if Roma are, go through tonight. D stranger things have definitely happened in football. But and recently enough. Recently enough is in the quarterfinal, in, as in what Barcelona did to Paris Saint-Germain last season, mm. what Juve almost managed to achieve at the Bernabeu just yeah. a few short weeks ago. Yeah. What um, Liverpool did a few years back, remember, to win it? You know, so the was question it, was that is, Istanbul, was it? Was that? Yeah, yeah, I think so, something like that. And that, that was the fifth time they'd won it, was it? You never yeah. hear about that, do you? <laughs> <laughs> but the question, like, like you never hear about the new camp. The comment you made there about a young-looking Liverpool side, you'd, if if Roma score and score early, you know th what exactly happens there? You know, because they they have this freshness about them. They have this kind of, um, you know, they're just relatively, you know. It, it's young, it's brash, it's just going for it. If if the old squeeze comes on, um, because five nil up and into you know to concede those two yeah. later on, that 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 has to be somewhere that there. Definitely, mind. definitely, and and also their assistant coaches walked out this week. Like it's a, a bunch of weird things have happened. The two goals, the assistant coach. It's going to be a very intimidating atmosphere. 
It will be hostile atmosphere, but it's very difficult to envisage a 90-minute spell where that Liverpool team fail to score against that Roma team. And I think one goal, one goal will do it. I'll fly through uh, my papers. The Herald this morning, John John's exclusive. Pool could do without the Bivac drama, or the Bivac drama, the Sheehan... Uh, comments there, Sheehan queries Dublin's drive, the Kerry mind games begin very early for that and Klopp wants brave hearts, Liverpool are ready for these tests says the Anfield chief Jürgen. Uh, the Mirror this morning, gladiators we are ready, I guess you probably need to say that in a Scottish accent do you? Most of our viewers or listeners probably wouldn't get that particular reference. Yeah. Gladiators we are ready, <laughs> what was your man's name? Uh, Robert, Do you have any idea what I'm William talking about? Wallace. <laughs> oh, no. the dude in the American football refereeing costume in the old Gladiators program on ITV. No, no, no oh, clue wow. whatsoever. What? Is that what it is? Yeah. yeah. No, well, I, I, that's I what I think it Braveheart is. The Braveheart there. Was I look up with two channels. I grow up with two channels. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, I'm not going back to the 1980s here, Jerry. This is like round about 1990s. Oh, yeah, John yeah, Fashnew yeah. and Ulrika Johnson. Oh, no? Two channels, Dave. God, you really were neglected as a kid. Anyway, he says they're ready. The gladiators heading into the uh, the Colosseum that will be the Stadio Olimpico this evening. Uh, the Sun Sport this morning. Rome is where the heart is. Klopp says dream big. They want to go out and win that game. Uh, Martin O'Neill, interesting, saying we will not be waiting on Liam Kelly. If he wants to play for Ireland, he has to be the person to make the first move. And uh, Kevin Walsh having another go at uh, what he calls lazy pundits. And I think he's pretty much talking to Sunday game journalists there and how I they cover. What, 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 what Describing happens? Galway as being a defensive Fensive. team with right. uh, playing with a lot of negativity and players can't possibly enjoy themselves playing within that system. Is that what they've said? I'm, like, I haven't seen that. That has been analysis. the general narrative over the you last few weeks. You were on one of those. Is that what you doing? Yeah. Well, when oh, I say, yeah, 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 when yeah. I throw a blanket over Sunday game pundits, I'm, I'm throwing hey, it over him yeah, as well. Okay, yeah. <laughs> well you, was the strict instructions here? By the way, anytime you talk about Galway, lazy, oh, sorry, uh, sure defensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's your here's your script. I think I think my I think my comments were were forgotten about. I think it was it was I have to say some of the comments about them because I actually thought they were really really impressive. Um, and he has built a serious team. This is fourth year. They are uh, massive game obviously against Mayo, but they have done everything that he needs to do. He I got rid so. of a lot of players, and and that was a real big team. There's a lot of fellas saying, oh, why has he dropped this? With? He got rid of a lot of messing going on, and he brought these guys back on his to his terms, and everything is on his terms. It seems. Yeah, so they're going to be. Uh, and they've they've evolved year on year. They've got. Better do, and better. I do think it only works if you're winning. Like the likes of a Sean Armstrong will only buy into this system if they're winning matches and they're progressing and they've chances of playing in the Super Eights because it doesn't really uh, suit someone of his skill set, for example. But if you're to work hard and challenge and be defensive yeah. when you don't when you're out of possession of the yes. ball. Come on, that's exactly what every team yeah, has but to it do. Is, but oh, it is that's not, I'm not saying that's not what every team has to do. I'm saying the only way certain guys will buy into it, guys who've been through various regimes over the last 10 years, is if it's successful and you're winning. I you, think that you, those players are the, the ones who will, will start quickly will, enough will buy if they don't into it most of all because they've been through losing campaign after losing campaign after losing campaign. Well, it is it is tricky, and the one thing I say, so you, you have certainly you would have guys, and I'm not listen, I'm not privy to it, but you would looking from the outside in, you would have fellas who say would have had. There's been plenty of managers. Right, so there's probably a lot of player power down there. We don't like the way this is going on. We like the way this. So Walsh went in. From what I can see, is he went in and said, "Okay, we let it year one see how it is." But then year two or three, remember there was lots of people saying, "Why is he gone? Why is that guy gone? Guys weren't playing yeah. everything else," and they have all come back into the fold. So it has been. Listen, this is where the the tram lines are. This is where we're going to do this. You're either in or so you're not. And if you're not, that's fine. But you're going to do it under my terms. And I agree with you. But you can't get the success, I believe, without having that set up first. Because if you're behold to a bunch of people, you're going absolutely nowhere. You're just going to be the next guy on the conveyor belt. So he has to, much like Jim Gavin, you have to go in and stamp your authority and say, Oh, it's your way on the highway. There's no, uh, yeah. 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 There's no alternative. Uh, lastly, for me, no time for losers. This is the Irish Daily Star this morning. More reference to Jurgen Klopp and the press pre-match press conference yesterday. Gerard Rangers contact positive. He did admit on BT Sport last night he was covering the game, the Rail uh, Byron game, and he said, yeah, he has held talks with them and those talks will resume on Thursday. And then the agony and the ecstasy, Rail 2, Bayern Munich 2, brilliant game with the Bernabeu last night, uh, decided by uh, a goalkeeping howler that we probably haven't seen for the best part of 10 or 15 years, yes. outfoxed by the back pass rule. Fast, wasn't it? Oh, it was unbelievable. We were looking at the, uh, the, his d date of birth this morning. He was four when the back pass rule was brought into the game and yet... He's, he's never lived with anything other than that. No, and hasn't. Manuel Neuer is like generally considered to be pretty good at that kind of stuff, right? Okay, can I ask you a question? Like, as in, he, he would have been learning from somebody who totally understands it and training every day. It's like, we get the ball, we pass it around. No? 
Yeah, it's just, he just got, everything just got to him in that one moment. Did he think it was, did he think it came from one of his own players? Did he think he would have had to maybe slide in? I think he thought he was going to have to slide in on Benzema and actually make a save. And, and then the he realised actually quick. Benzema's a bit slower than I thought. I think you're being very generous to him there. Incredibly generous. But, you know, he was kind of in that frame and then he was like, oh, I have to readjust. And he obviously, he was already in some kind of a sliding motion and so he just couldn't get his legs over. Just handle it and take the Ronaldo free kick. Chances are Ronaldo's going to balloon it over the crossbar. Yeah, but he wasn't yeah. thinking straight. You know, all this, this kind of stuff was not going through his mind at that moment. He just forgot it was a back pass until the last possible moment, and in a bit to readjust his body, the whole thing just imploded. But isn't it amazing? You know, it's the, it's the old saying, the Tyson saying, everyone has a plan. You know, you're there at half time, you go through everything. Yeah. And right, it's going like, really well, we're back in this, come on. <laughs> you're probably not even sat down as a coach. Did he, what just happened there? <laughs> and you're oh, out, and okay. you're out because of it. It's just an awful mistake. But some amount of howlers, to be fair to Bayern, like even yeah. in the first, in the, like if you take those howlers out of it. No, yeah, because I actually didn't think Bayern this season were as good as they have been, but it turns out they were really good. There's just a few. Well, his own Hargreaves said on BT Sport last night, if you take all of Bayern's mistakes over the two legs out of it, they'd have gone through. Yeah, good point.